You've been called for jury duty. Why jury duty and why you? In this program, I'll explain why you've been called and how. You'll also hear from citizens just like you who have served on a jury before. They'll explain what it was like and what you can expect. You'll also hear from two United States Supreme Court justices about why Americans have always cared so very much about jury duty. When our Constitution was formed in the 1700s, there was no clear understanding of what the framers were going to come up with when they started writing our Constitution, with one exception. They were absolutely clear in their minds that we wanted to provide for trial by jury. That was a given. The framers of our Constitution felt so strongly about trial by jury that they put it in the Constitution. They put it in the Bill of Rights. It applies to criminal trials, to all criminal trials. It applies to many civil trials. They regarded it as one of the most important safeguards of democracy. I think in, to their minds it was as important as the right to vote. We don't take just retired people or people who have time on their hands. We want the whole community represented. We want people who are uh, people engaged in their ordinary work but who take time off to hear a case as well as others. We want a full sampling of the community because that's who we are entrusting our lives and our honor and our most important issues. What we ask jurors to do um, are things that they're, they're really experts on. They are more expert than we judges are in judging ordinary human behavior. Just because they are living um, in the community and they meet all sorts of people and they find themselves in a great variety of situations and so um, our legal system is based on the idea that they can they can hear a witness testify and make a good judgment about whether that witness is telling the truth or whether the witness really remembers. By including a broad spectrum of the community in the jury pool we're assured of a broader perspective in the jury that actually sits on the case. Let's say I'm a doctor. Uh, I'm very busy and I'm called for jury duty. I may not want to go, uh, but if I'm sued as a doctor, uh, I would probably like to have somebody like me serving on the jury. Or, you know, maybe I'm uh, an interstate truck driver. I'm away from home a lot. I'm on the road serving on a jury is uh, a big inconvenience for me, but I could well be a party to a case. And wouldn't I want somebody like me to be on the jury? Not necessarily a doctor or a truck driver, but somebody like me in some sense. Uh, so it's important that people who have children serve on juries. It's important that people who uh, are, are very busy at work serve on juries. Uh, it's not good for juries to be uh, drawn only from a narrow segment of the community. When we first started having jury trials, only white males who were property owners in this country could serve as trial jurors. Six or seven years before I was nominated as a justice, there were still states that gave women an excuse any time they wanted not to serve on juries. That has since changed. The courts now make a very great effort to make sure that the jury pool is truly representative of the community. At times in the past it was not. Uh, it was badly skewed in some places at some times and, and that major efforts have been made to correct that. I presided over a great many jury trials in both civil and criminal cases. My own experience is that the trial jurors I saw coming into the court day in and day out were very decent citizens. They were people who didn't know a lot about the process, but they were willing to serve as trial jurors and they wanted to do uh, what they were supposed to do as trial jurors, listen to the evidence and make a decision in criminal cases on guilt or innocence and in civil cases on liability.
I've been called twice recently in the last couple of years to the jury room or the meeting room where they do the selection. And in both cases, I sat there and read a book, and they'd, they'd say, listen up, we've got some names. They'd read out a whole bunch of names, and people, he'd get up and walk off. And both times, they never, ever called my name. Well, I waited all that day, and then they, at the end of the day, they told us we had to come back the next day. And we went back the next day, and I, I was called, I think, around noon. But then they gave us a break for lunch, and then after lunch, we were called into the courtroom. At the courthouse, there are lots of trials going on at any one time. And you're not just called for one particular trial. You may be asked to serve in a criminal trial, which may mean helping to decide whether an accused is innocent or guilty. Or if it's a civil trial, you'll be asked to help resolve a dispute. Or you may be dismissed and not have to serve at all. Only a few of those who are actually called get selected to serve on a jury. Now, the jury selection process works something like this. First, we call up as many jurors as we need from the waiting room. Then the attorneys for both sides of the case get to ask the jurors questions. Typically, they ask you and your fellow jurors about your background and past experience. Your job is to answer honestly and completely. The judge and the attorneys will determine which jurors are best suited for that particular trial. We ask plenty of citizens to show up at the courthouse ready to serve on any one of these trials, more than we would need if we didn't go through this kind of filtering process. And the way that pool of potential jurors is selected is totally random to make sure we're including a diverse selection of members of the community who all bring different perspectives to the courtroom. Now, the process may seem slow and tedious and inefficient sometimes, but the point is not just to get an adequate jury as fast as possible. We're not aiming for shortcuts. We're aiming to be fair. That's what's important. Fair play. What's at stake is justice people's lives, and doing what's right. The first thing that we got in the courtroom was the judge's uh, dissertation as to what uh, we should do. And the one thing that we shouldn't do was talk about this to each other. We were not to talk to anybody at home, discuss it with any family members. We were given strict guidelines. We weren't supposed to talk to anyone outside of that courtroom about anything, not even our spouses, children, nobody, except each other when we went back into the jury room to deliberate. I remember there was a case where I wasn't called for where the defendant's sister actually asked some jurors questions in the, in the bathroom, and someone actually reported that back to the judge, and he had the... He, told her she, she couldn't actually sit in there with the jurors anymore because there's actually an audience area, too, where people can sit. Then the attorneys came up and gave the opening arguments, and then they went into the, all the evidence. The attorneys each came out and spoke. Now, they were very, very polite to each other, very professional about it, and each one gave his, his speech. And then when they both, both had explained the case, that's when the witnesses were called in, and that's when it became very interesting because some of the witnesses were funny, some were kind of quirky, some were totally beyond belief. When you're sitting there in the, the jury box, most of the time you're just watching the person on the witness stand, and you're listening to the questions that the lawyer asks. Uh, every now and then the judge may interject and say something, uh, but most of the time, you're not really looking out at the, the people in the courtroom, and you're not really looking out who's, who's sitting at the table. You're watching the reaction between the, the lawyer who's doing the questioning and the guy who's doing the answering on the witness stand. Those are the hard parts, because you're listening to somebody explain exactly how this happened, and somebody else comes on and says, no, this is the way it happened. It's a little bit different. And who, who's right? Who's right? And so this is going on. It's a, it's a dance that takes place on the courtroom. And... When the final arguments come up, then it becomes real theater. 
that's when the, the big guns come out and they come up close and personal and get in your face and talk to you. This is, this is what you must believe. And then the other one, this is what you must believe. And what do you believe? <laughs> Who do you believe? That's what, I, that's what, I, what happens in there. It, it is like a theater. The jury system is built on the democratic idea that ordinary people can make good judgments. Now, when a, sub, when a trial involves uh, a complicated uh, area, uh, maybe it involves technology, maybe it involves science or something like that, the jurors are given help. The, the parties call witnesses. The experts come and testify to the jurors and tell the jurors what they as experts see in the fingerprint evidence, the DNA evidence, and so on and then let the jurors decide. The case was based on a medical case. And so the expert witness that they brought in was a doctor. There was nobody else that could explain it. And he was an expert on this in the field. And what we saw was a doctor, and he stood almost right in front of us. And he had a board where he could bring down charts. And we were getting a, a lesson, a medical lesson, you might say, from this doctor. He, he wasn't he didn't seem to be in the position of uh, arguing the case. He was simply describing what happened to the gentleman who's in the wheelchair. Trial by jury, at the end of the day, requires the jurors to get together in the jury room as a small group and hammer out the facts, the evidence, which they've heard, and talk about it and try to reach a consensus. It's not unlike what nine justices have to do at the U.S. Supreme Court. After we have heard arguments in a case, all the nine justices meet in a, a conference room. It's private, just like the jury room is. We all have the opportunity to speak. We try to persuade each other. We try to reach an agreement. That is exactly what happens in the trial jury process. People get together, having heard everything, all the evidence, and the judge's instructions, and then try to hammer out what they think they can agree to. Once the trial had ended and we went into deliberations, we tried to come up with an agreement then, but we couldn't. So the judge dismissed us for that day, and we had to come back the next day. And we deliberated uh, practically all day until like around 4 o'clock. We tried to make it as logical as possible, you know, we tried to way each little piece of evidence that was presented. I liked it because everybody was so different and everybody had different opinions. I think all of us have some type of moral compass and you try to just do what you feel is right when you're there. If it's, if it's not right, then you're not going to do it. We asked uh, for evidence to be brought back in because all of us couldn't come to an agreement. At that point, I can't remember who was the holdout or how many it was, but we needed to have one more Thing that could tell us that this person was actually guilty and that piece of evidence helped us. It's a small room, it's not a big room. <laughs> so everybody's going to want to know why are you voting like that. It's not like you're in the ballot box and you come out and nobody knows what you did. The feeling I, I got was one of in strong citizen involvement, of responsibility, of uh, doing something that is above and beyond what we normally do. You know, policemen probably get a lot of that feeling, too, when they're at work, and I'm sure a lot of people get that. But those of us who work usually by ourselves or at a desk or something don't get that feeling very often. I can tell you that people who actually do serve on juries regard it as a very serious and solemn experience, no matter how they go into it. I, I, I can remember cases in which... Uh, I handled mostly criminal cases before I became a judge, but I can remember cases in which the jurors were, it seems almost lighthearted at the time when they were selected. And then at the time when they, they gave their verdict, no matter which way the verdict went, they, many of them were actually crying um, just because they, they found that the responsibility of having to say that this defendant is guilty or not guilty was such a serious and important responsibility. It was raining that day, and this guy, even after he lost the case, he just kind of, we saw him walk outside and just kind of walk around in the rain, you know, I guess he, and he was getting drenched. Sometimes it's uh, scary, sometimes it's uh, painful, to, you know, painful to watch things that, uh, that happen. 
but it leaves you a feeling uh, you know, that the system does work and you're part of it. You have to remember, even when you make a decision like that, that is going to affect someone negatively and it's going to affect someone positively. Um, you know, there's no, there's no in between, you know, somebody, you know, somebody's a winner, somebody's a loser. And this guy, you can see he, you know, he really felt that he, 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 he lost. And, um, you can see him, I can still see him walking around in the rain. Can I make a decision that affects somebody's life profoundly? You know, that's, it's a great responsibility I mean, That's the thing. It's a great responsibility and it feels good to have that kind of responsibility and fulfill it. The trial jury system that we have, um, I think, makes the American citizen more of a stakeholder in what happens in our nation than is the case in other countries. And that's one reason why I think we think we should hang on to our trial jury system. It does make the citizen a key component of what happens in this country. My mother would be 96 today if she was alive. And she never, um, I mean, she voted once she got a chance to vote. But by us living, I, I guess not really me, but her coming up in the time that she came up, she didn't have the right, the right to vote. She didn't have the right to be called for a jury. So when I was called, I thought it was a privilege. But that's what she had always instilled in me. I guess one aspect of jury service is that um, when some citizen gets a notice to come down to the court on day X to see if they can serve as a trial juror, and you might say, oh, goodness, I don't want to be bothered to do that. I may go down there and they may not pick me. Why should I go? However, I think most of us realize that um, there but for the grace of God go I. I might be one of the litigants someday in a courtroom needing to have the issues addressed by a jury drawn from my community. And I want good citizens to be on my own jury if that ever happens to me. So I think when I get a notice like that, I should respond favorably, and so should you. On behalf of all of us at the court and your fellow citizens throughout Georgia, thank you for your service. Even if you're not selected to sit on a jury, keep in mind that many cases settle just before they are called to trial because you are here and ready to serve. Today, you've made a difference. Remember, if you are selected, be on time, be patient, don't discuss the case with anyone other than your fellow jurors, and then only when you've been authorized by the judge to do so. And don't do or say anything that might favor one side or another. Again, thank you.